Okay, I think we are streaming. Ha oh, ha. Oh. Hi. Dear sir or madam, will you read my book? It took me years to write. Will you take a look? It's based on a novel by a man named Weir. And I need a job and I want to be a paperback writer. Paperback writer. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the whole song, I think. It's a thousand pages. Give or take a few, I'll be writing more in a week or two. I can make it longer if you like my style. That's how British people talk in my head. I can change it round, I wanna be a paperback writer. Paperback writer. Have you ever noticed that Americans say the ER hard when they sing, but British people don't? Like British people go, I want to be a paperback writer. Paperback writer. Americans would go paperback writer. Paperback writer. Paperback writer. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. The unbearable live stream. The unbearable lightness of being a bear. Hello. Are you able to close some windows on your computer? Close some windows? Why is it slow? Yeah. The, the, the stream. The stream slow? Let me, well, I'll, I'll fix that right now, love. Let me see. How do I... Well, I have this plugged in. Are you able to start again? I'm, I just hit start. We'll see. It says stream offline. I think it's back. Let's see. Is it like this bad the whole time? Um, it was just doing this for me. And usually the app's like very smooth. Is it still doing it now? Yeah. So what do you think the problem is? Um, what internet are you connected to? Are you 5G? Uh, let me just start everything over. Oh yeah, do 5G. Maybe that will do it. All right, how's it looking now? <laughs> I think it might be Video better okay now. here now, says Neil. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I think it's better now. I don't want to. Computer AIDS is the problem. I kind of look like... Is this working at all? Can you just double check what you're connected to? This is fucking crazy. It is, okay. Because I can't even do it on my phone because I can't stream off my phone because I'm locked out of YouTube. Video is back? Yeah, but it's not back. It looks like shit. It says it's working, that you can hear him. What, are we live? No, we're not live. It's For me, it's frozen as shit. And there it goes again. Yeah, it's it's fucked. The amount of money I've spent on this is unbelievable. So this Vimeo is working. It's. I mean, I'm I'm right here and it's not. Yeah, I don't know why that one's not. Do you want to try closing that one? I'll just close all the windows and then open it back up. You don't have to close all of them, just close this one. Because sometimes a huge penis, because of the chat on the same page, just do the stream only. See if that one works. People are saying it's working on Vimeo. If it's not working on this computer, I, I don't trust that it's working. And I won't be able to like just start talking, because I, it, the whole time I'll think it's going to 
and like why is this wheel just spinning and spinning and spinning of all the days this is just crazy 2000 bucks yeah maybe just uh close your safari and restart it well if it is working people can just see like the 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 face of um frustration <laughs> Click here to watch the live stream. It's pixelated now because we changed the. Uh, I know because we have to make it as the... as low quality as possible. How is this possible? Like, didn't we just pay a guy to come here and like make it better? Yeah, it's it's probably just a weird glitch with. Um... <sighs> I'm guessing the huge penis, maybe. I gotta make the bitrate better. I can't have it this shitty. Yeah, people can go to Vimeo. You just have to click the bottom. Um, it's not right even worth it. Like none of it. It's not worth it. It's like, what's the point of this? Someone just said, "Relax, everything will be okay." Go fuck yourself, Kodiak. How's that sound? It's your computer. Well, it's a brand new power book. It was a $3,500 computer right. that I just bought five months ago. So what do I have to buy another one from no, these fucking it's animals? It's not the computer. It's just the website. We just have to go to, I can do it on my computer. What's the, what's the it. website? What's I was going to go and just re um, embed it, embed it if that's okay with you. Yeah. Cause it might just, since we stopped and started, it may have just messed it up. It's just so dishonest for people to take all this money from us and not have anything work ever. I've just oops. Messed. How do I? It doesn't see even the playback right now is jumping. Yeah. Can you can you hit pause? Just give me a second. Should I stop it? It's like still going right now. I know. It's almost, I'm almost done. I'm just going to re... No, but see, like we should delete the last video because all it is is just us just talking shit about technology. All right. Whatever you want to do. I can, if you want to delete this. No, let it, it's fine. Let it, let it be there. Mm -mm. It's like, all right, the day after losing all our money, let's just go ahead and fucking make it so nothing works. <laughs> it's hilarious. Let's try that. There we go. That makes it any better. That looks like it's working. Close Thank you. Eyes. Thank you, love. Amy saves the motherfucking day, yo. Do you want to leave this up? We're no, gonna just ask. close it. Close it all. Sound and video are working. All right. Ah, uh, thanks, love. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is just total shit. It's still not working. No, it, well, it's still spinning here, but. I didn't know it's new. All right, working fine on my end. Play piano, shake it off. Go fuck yourself. How's that sound? Man, I hate people. I fucking hate people. Just shake it off, dude. The, the comments I've gotten about the book stuff have been infuriating. And if you guys just want to talk shit to me today, just get the fuck out of here. How's that sound? Well, this says you didn't finish your book. No, I finished my book in fucking February. I was going to just talk about that today, but... If you guys want to talk shit, this is probably not even a good idea for me to be doing this today, but fuck it. Every day, 11 to 1, every fucking day. I'm not going to miss a day because I, I can't um, notify anybody because I'm off YouTube and Twitter. So I have to do it at the same time every day, even if I'm in a horrible mood and everything's going to shit. 
because that's the corner I've been painted into. Good times. Good fucking times. And um, yeah. Justin just writes, Bud, what, should I smoke weed or is that a condescending thing you're saying to me? I don't understand. Jackson was a great president. For, I'm out. Good. Get the fuck out. Get out. Get the fuck out. I worked in publishing for 17 years. That letter suggested they wanted out. Owen called it. Yeah, I know. I'm about to tell the whole story today. Um, but I just fucking, man, it's, it's live by the sword, die by the sword. It's like, I, 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 I do keep like a real connection with you guys. And, um, but at the same time, it's like when you guys talk shit, like in moments of, of hardship, like I have to pay back $20,000 in cash, like immediately to a publisher. Do you understand that? Do you know how fucking devastating that is? And I can't even complain about it without people telling me that I'm like a victim or something. It's like, oh, you just always bitch and complain. Like, be funny. Yeah, I've done three fucking hour specials in under two years. I'm fucking hilarious. It's like these people, they act like they're going to rape you and then you're not allowed to tell the cops about it. It's like, no, I'm going to tell my goddamn story as it's happening. Jesus. All right, let's just stay fucking focused and I'll tell you the story about the book. And I was going to read the first um, chapter. Um, And I had some funny shit to show you guys. So I signed, it was the the night of of my, uh, the second year I hosted the Art Director Guild Awards. And that's where I met this literary agent. The same agent as Amy Schumer. He sold that, that, uh, steaming pile of shit that Amy Schumer wrote for $8 million. Um, and so I sold my book to a great publisher. It's uh, called um, Norton. And Norton, I'll tell you who, what they've done. They've done a lot of great stuff. And I'm like really on the edge right now, guys, because my even my fucking dad, it's like, I don't know. Norton, book list let's let's listen let's see what they've written i mean uh, um norton publishing the uh michael lewis all his uh books neil degrasse tyson astrophysics for people michael lewis who wrote um money ball and all those mo- those movies uh, they did Guns, Germs, and Steel. Uh, uh, most popular. Well, let me tell you a little story about a mouse named Glory. Uh, these are all just the ones that's just this year (sighs) who gives a fuck let me just tell you what uh what went down so i get an advance for sixty thousand dollars but i get twenty thousand up front and then i'd get another twenty thousand upon completing my first manuscript and then um or an accepted manuscript and then another twenty thousand when it's uh published 15 months later so i start i'm working with this editor who's awesome i still love the dude it's not his shit. Great guy, you know? In the first couple chapters, he says that his um, one of the women that worked under him read it and said it was one of the best things she's ever read. And since they thought that my book would only appeal to men, it, it was really exciting for them to, um, to see that there was going to be a massive female audience. It's called The Good Fight. And so... I'm writing it. It's going great. And then all this uh, shit started hitting the fan in my life. I lose my agent manager over the um, the trans kid shit. And I'm not even... T- I didn't bring any of this up on Rogan or any of this stuff. When people accuse me of, of trying to use um, scandals or, or, or shit like that. Uh, what's it called? Controversy to promote myself. 
I knew the whole time I was probably going to lose 60,000 bucks and an opportunity to be a New York Times bestselling author. I would have definitely been on the bestselling list. This is this this publishing is that big. My dad, who's real into prestige, um, said that, you know, all his office mates would uh, would kill to have that that credit and all this stuff. And he was so proud of me for for Norton, you know, the envy I would see in some of the people that he worked with's eyes. And so then as the story continues, what happens is I, I, I give the 80,000 word manuscript to my editor. My editor leaves Norton for a better job. So now there's no one at Norton that has my back and they're going to have uh, my editor still edit it, but they're going to pay him out of the side or whatever. They work out a deal. I already know that this is a very, very bad sign. This happened to me at Comedy Central once. Uh, where this executive pushed for my show uh, the same year that uh, Workaholics had a had a pilot. And my show was the Owen Benjamin show, and it had a bigger budget than Workaholics, and it was like really like seen as this new thing that was coming out. And that the executive that pushed it left before anyone made a decision on my show. And the Workaholics executive became president. So... Fortunately, Workaholics is a funny-ass show, and those guys are really cool, and I'm really glad that everything worked out for them. But behind the scenes in entertainment, there's a lot of politics, right? So when my editor leaves, and then I start being labeled as a alt-right Nazi, falsely, obviously, uh, I, I started not getting emails or calls or anything as to um, notes about my book. And my editor even told me that I'd have to rewrite every chapter over and over again and really work through the material over and over again. That's like unheard of. You know, I could have hired someone to do that potentially, but they weren't down with that. They, it would, basically what it is, is someone telling you um, it'll never be done. <clears throat> and so part of me is happy about what happened because um, I think that they would have sat on it forever. I don't think it would have gotten released. And, uh, after my experience with my hour special, The Huge Pianist one, I, I think that I would never take money up front to have something so personal and so important for me to write to not get out. So although um, having to pay back $20,000 that I barely have um, for freedom is, in my opinion, worth it. And it's not like, I don't think there's anything wrong with Norton. I don't think there's anything wrong with my editor. I think it's just a series of unfortunate events. Uh, I think Norton is an incredibly left-leaning agency that doesn't want uh, to be associated with someone like me. And my editor, who was personally backing me and really saw the vision, left the company. And um, also probably just, it all just fragmented. So that's kind of what happened. And I was, and, the, and a lot of the notes that he was telling me to do, uh, I didn't agree with, and I was just being positive about, but I'm glad that I will be able to just sell it myself from my site. But right now it's very um, difficult, you know, financially, but it's all good. It's the price of freedom, you know, and just, but the shit talking, man, the shit talking is, is not a good time. I don't mind if it's like the, the trolls out there, but where it's people that I think should, should be better. It's just insane. Ah, fuck. All right. What should we talk about today? I got a couple super chats that I wanted to uh, talk about here. Big Bear, this is the second time I've tried you. I love your podcast and what you're doing. I want to be involved and help get this groundswell organized. Anyway, please verify me as Palmetto Bear. Thanks for all you do, Charles. Welcome, Palmetto Bear. And we need all the help we can get. Um, so, you know, hit up me or one of the other, like, uh, Big Bears. You know, we have unbearable new, uh, newsnetwork.com is, is popping. All those guys are seeming to be very organized. And uh, the app is almost out. I was talking to Coder Bear this morning. Uh, we have the, the app domain registered. We have everything ready to go. I've been a little busy uh, dealing with other stuff right now. But that will be a game changer. And I think it's working really, really well, according to those guys. And so that will be uh, a way where the Bears 
can be notified when I do a live stream. You can talk to each other. It'll be a constant chat. Um, it'll get around all these insane and unfair and ridiculous obstacles that keep being thrown at me. And then when I voice the issues, I'm then called, um, like, say that I bitch too much or that I, I'm just a crybaby or some shit. It's like, I'm permanently banned from Twitter. I can't upload to my YouTube with 115,000 followers until July. I'm banned from most venues. I'm no longer allowed to be booked at the improv, uh, certain improvs. Uh, I'm, I'm routinely slandered in newspapers for no fucking reason. This all is because I'm taking the path of no agent, free speech, Second Amendment rights, family uh, values, and just being a good dude. And if anybody says racism, sexism, homophobia, they're so full of fucking shit. It's like, I'll show you any of these guys, like what their jokes are. Any of the biggest names in comedy, and a lot of them are vile, just disgusting human beings. And uh, the fact I'm labeled as morally wrong, when the irony is, is I'm being morally not wrong in a fucking world that's becoming more and more disgusting. And we all know it. We all see it. And we all hope that more people will stand up to the fire. You know, that's always the, the goal. It's like, oh, well, more so, somebody will do something, right? They don't. And, and look at what happens when people do, right? And that's why it's important that you guys support this. Or else more people will say, look what happened to Owen. They shut him right down. He can't do comedy anymore. So I'm going to be scared to say what I want. That's why this is a community. Uh, this is a group fucking effort. And we all know it. And if you let them just keep burying me without another, uh, without another story, without another perspective, without another way of looking at it, you're fucking your own futures. And you know it. I know it. You know, the world always thinks like, oh, well, somebody's going to come and help. Someone has to come and help. Someone has to make the decision to come and help. And I did. And I am. And if, and if people want to just fucking... Now my, my fucking browser won't even work. I can't even look at the PayPal fucking chats. This is such horseshit. Because I can't use any of the normal fucking apps that everybody gets... That ISIS is allowed to use. Because I'm such a bad man. Jesus. Yeah, PayPal won't even load. Just shut, just shut me down. Is the fucking video even working? Reboot your modem and router, then reboot your system. Clear your web browser cookies. Your RAM is probably full. Uh, Jesus. Okay, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I'll clear everything. Clear all history. There we go. Uh, so, so the fact that I paid thousands of dollars to literally get this Vimeo service as well as the fastest possible internet with the most modern computer possible, um, that doesn't do it. That's not enough. You need an in-house IT nerd. Well, I can't fucking afford that. Jesus. Watch that clip be all cut up and everybody, oh, look at him spiral. Look at him, you fucking faggots. You need a new laptop, Big Bear. I bought this six fucking months ago. It was 3,500 bucks. You guys, you guys are fucking assholes, man. You need a new laptop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just more money, more stuff, more money, more stuff. That's going to be the fucking solution, huh? Just more shit. More shit that doesn't work. Good. Good. That's the fucking answer. Just just riding this shit right to hell, are we? You fucking idiots. You need new this. You need new that. You know how many times I've fucking heard that? Since I've done this, that's all it is. It's all about like technology, like what what I need, what I don't have. I'm going to read you guys. I'm going to put myself in a better mood by just reading the first chapter of a fucking book that I thought was really good. 
It's broken up into dates. This is called date one from um, a book called The Good Fight. It's called Weapons of Mass Distraction. If my phone hadn't died, I never would have met my wife. According to her, she had walked past me the morning before we met and had tried to get my attention. Unfortunately, my eyes were locked on the shiny screen in my hand as I navigated the Los Angeles sidewalk using only my peripheral vision. Scientists say the closest relative to the human is the chimpanzee. I think it's the moth. We just can't stop being pulled toward that artificial light, even if we know it's to our demise. What was I so interested in the morning I walked past my future wife and the mother of my children? Was I scrolling through the people who liked my recent Facebook post? Was I wondering why there was so few likes on my most recent post? That I could even scroll, um, post that I could even scroll them. Did some celebrity do something overly human, like apologize? Fortunately for me, my phone was dead on the morning I met my wife. You might be wondering why someone who was so addicted to their device as I would let such a thing happen. And that's a fine question to ask, especially after telling you my moth theory. And the answer is simple. At the time, I was living a mere five blocks from the Hollywood Improv where I would frequently perform and even more frequently perform and then drink all night. So with a massive hangover and a dead phone, I walked my dog Benny on the palm tree lined street I was renting an apartment on. It was my birthday week in May. And for the first time in a while, um, I had peripheral vision. The first, the first thing I saw was her dog, a bold animal that has a way of cutting through the BS and just strolling up to another dog and saying, would any of you ladies or gentlemen like to smell my penis? Politely, the other dog or dogs would then lean in and, and, smell, and smell it like they're smelling a glass of fine wine. In the subtle expression of a dog, one can see they are learning, processing, understanding the other animals they are smelling. Um, I don't fucking know. This is stupid. I just don't feel like doing any of this shit. Like, this is still so laden with fucking notes that every time I move, there's like little pop-ups like, hey, think about this word. Blah, blah, blah. Fucking assholes. In that moment with my future wife standing mere feet from me, I had the profound thought the canines smell each other the way humans read the about section on someone's Facebook or Instagram. Luckily, our dogs worked out their about me sections of their genitals with civility, so my eyes were free to move up to her owner. I'll never forget her first smile. It's the same smile I see every day now and in our son's face. I would do it no justice with a description, just trust me, it's incredible. Amy was drinking a beer, a red stripe. She was wearing short Daisy Dukes and had on a flower hairband. I don't remember who said what to get the conversation going, but we ended up standing on the corner for almost an hour talking. She was my neighbor, lived two blocks down. I've been magnetically drawn to certain people before and have experienced that divine pull toward another human being. Maybe someone's skin or the curve of their hip, a joke they told or a twang in their accent, but never something as powerful as this. It turned out she had gotten her dog at the shelter she volunteered at every Sunday. When no one else wanted the sweet but easily startled pup, Amy took her in and treated her like family. Even though Amy liked raves, was getting her master's at USC in engineering, and drank beer by herself on the street during the day, she still had a shyness about her. I could tell she was in control, planned, moved with intention, went after what she wanted, yet I could sense she was slightly uncomfortable in her own skin. That's why I was surprised when she asked for my, my phone number. It was love. It was a form of love at first sight. That being said, this is not one of those love stories in which anyone would confuse us with Prince and Princess Charming. We had so much upheaval and insanity the first few years of our relationship. Neither of us were ready for what was to come, capable of handling it maturely or possessing the skills to have a positive or constructive relationship. In other words, we were fucked. So fucked, in fact, that I still don't understand how we survived, but we did. Actually, that's not totally true. I think it was laughter and lust that kept us from giving up when any other sane person would have quit. One night I was making her laugh by replacing the letter R with the letter W in words as I spoke an octave higher than normal. Excuse me, I can twy playing with your twain set? 
Her eyes put me in a twance. Would you like to try a chocolate? She thought it was hilarious and kept making me do it. Later, we rubbed oil on each other in a sauna after Walter, our baby, went to sleep and, have a, and had a lovely makeout session. Still, there were times when we were in such a dark place that no light could escape the black emotional hole we spawned. With tears in our eyes, we begged the other person to somehow make it funny. Please make it funny. And we would try as best we could. For most of the world, life these days, like my relationship with Amy, is one of those wonderful contradictions. It's never been easier to acquire knowledge, meet people, and express your opinion. Yet, the same tools that give us the ability to stay connected and converse with humans across the globe also tend to make us feel a sense of isolation, loneliness, and distrust of the information we are bombarded with. Amy calls it refresh mode when I fall into a trance of my pocket prison. It usually comes when I first come back from the road and I'm exhausted. I'll just stare at my phone, refreshing my email, then refreshing my Twitter, then refreshing my Instagram, then checking the weather. Then I look on Amazon for stuff I don't need, then repeat, repeat again. Nothing productive ever comes from it. I'll end up arguing with someone about nothing on Twitter, get persuaded to go on some exotic place in the Mediterranean we can't afford because of Instagram, and then I'll buy an exercise bike on Amazon that doesn't fit my six foot seven frame and end up putting it in the shed. I fall in between two worlds. I'm old enough to know it's bad and I know I should get back to making eye contact with my family, but I'm young enough where I still do it. There are people who remember a time before the internet and people who don't. Personally, I reside somewhere in between. I'm young enough to plunge into the cyber reality of Instagram stories and Reddit rabbit holes. I'm young enough to not call my computer the Google machine and be on a first name basis with a support technician in India. I'm also old enough where I was mentally formed in an era where you made a plan to meet someone where, and if you didn't find that person, the plan failed. Accountability. When someone said, meet me in the mall at one and then hung up the phone, that was all you had. You were off the grid. The other person had to be there. You had to be there and there was no way of communicating to the other person once you left your home. Today, People send each other eight texts, a screenshot, and a FaceTime until you are eight feet away from the kiosk their friend is standing uh, beside, and you still may not find each other. I was formed in a time before caller ID when the ringing of a telephone could have been anyone in the world and you had to answer it. You couldn't screen calls. You picked it up with a lot of hope. Hello? You would answer, dreaming of the infinite possibilities that existed right up until the other person spoke. If someone didn't answer their phone, you called over and over again until they did. If you went through a breakup, you couldn't stalk them online. You had to actually stalk them. It was a much creepier time to be alive in that respect. It was not that uncommon to see someone who had a crush on you or someone who didn't like you walk past your house four or five times in an evening. The world before the internet seemed much safer when in reality it was much more dangerous. All major crime stats were way higher in the 80s and we were in a very hostile cold war with Russia. Cigarettes being bad for you is still heavily debated, and back seats rarely had uh, seat belts. Oddly, however, no one seemed all that panicked. Instead, they just listened to Duran Duran, do weird stuff with their hair, and wear bizarre fitting jeans. Information transferred very slowly, and we mostly didn't know about all the horrible things that happened daily, because information was spread through a 30-minute news program that had to also make room for what we really cared about, weather and cute-ass kittens. Maybe you'd see the face of an abducted child on a milk carton and have a weird conversation at breakfast, but in general, people didn't really know about anything, or at the very least, the sheer scope of how awful the world can be. Lying was super easy back then, too. If you were at a party, you could say something to anyone, and unless they had an encyclopedia in their backpack, there's no way to know if the person was lying. You had to trust your gut and look at their neck. You can always see lies in the neck. Now that we have the internet, you don't have to look at their eyes or neck. You look at your phone and Google what the person said. Within seconds, you know his grandfather did not invent the harmonica, and it isn't illegal in France to not have a twirly mustache. That guy was a liar. Pornography was also much different before the internet. Now every conceivable kink is just a point and click away. To see has, um, everything has a category of almost infinite amount of clips. Carl Sagan once said that the total m- number of stars in the universe is greater than all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the planet. If Carl were alive today, he probably would have gone on to say that the total number of stars in the universe is less than the amount of porn clips on the internet. Speaking of, 
It's depressing to see a porn clip titled Horny MILF Oiled Boobs with horrible production quality getting 100 million hits and the stand-up clip I put up a month ago getting 5,000. But I get it. I'm just not willing to oil my boobs. Okay, I'll, I will oil my boobs, but I know no one wants to see them, so I'll keep pretending like it's my choice to not oil my boobs. Anyway, before the internet, pornography was a crumpled page of an old playboy in the woods hidden under some leaves that had been handed down through the generations. In my hometown, there was one such picture at the top of a small hill in the woods everyone referred to as Spank Mountain. Looking back, there's a decent chance it wasn't even a picture of a naked woman at all. But instead, one of those ink blot tests, we saw on that old crumpled page what we wanted to see. When I was a kid, my mother would read grim fairy tales to me. They were truly horrifying, and I still don't understand how anyone considers that childhood priest sleep material. Still, the moral of the story was easily digested, and we all knew the wolf in the story was just a metaphor. By story's end, I'd be wide-eyed in terror, asking my mom if the big bad wolf was going to eat me. My mom would shake her head and look at me sweetly and say, No, Owen, there's no big bad wolf in Oswego, New York. It's a story about not going too far off the path. Things have changed now that the sex offenders have started registering online and the results are readily available for everyone. Today, parents can look online and see that their nice little neighborhood is littered with convicted rapists. I wonder how mom and dad would have to break it to their kids that, yes, the big bad wolf is around the corner and his name is Donald and he's always wearing sweatpants. When I met Amy, she had recently made a Match.com profile and had some bad dates. That was years ago, and I still have no idea about the ins and outs of dating apps. In an attempt to understand, I've asked friends, ranging from highly specific J-date to the highly non-specific Tinder, or the even more non-specific Grindr, the apps have been described to me a whole bunch of different ways. Some find them fun and use without a lot of explanation. Some rave about them and show me pictures of children from the marriage they got from the experience. I surprise, uh, a surprisingly large amount, however, describe feeling tricked, unsatisfied, disconnected from reality as they swipe past faces. With such speed and judgment, they physically get a sore thumb. I call it Tinder thumb. If I were a Tinder man, I would have likely never met Amy. On paper, we don't line up. We aren't compatible. We wouldn't have been paired. Algorithms are obviously useful on a scientific level, but I trust them less when they are being used for cultural purposes. My mom is a children's literature professor. So, all right, I, I'll check in, see if this is even, if you guys are digging this or I'm going to keep, I'm going to finish this. Um, is this working? Is the video still working? If so, I'll, I'll finish the chapter and then I'll uh, chat with you guys. All right, cool. Apparently it's still working. Where was I? My mom is a children's literature professor, so I was raised with a lot of children's stories, not just Grimm's. One of my favorites was The Missing Piece. There was this circle with, you guessed it, a missing piece. And the circle rolled around looking for its missing piece, and every piece it came across was either too big or too small. So it would continue rolling alone. As it would awkwardly roll through the meadow, incomplete circles don't roll very well. It would be going so slow that it would, have, it would have the time to talk to the butterflies and trees and other friends. I may be messing up some critical plot points, but I think it was butterflies and trees and other friends. So then one day, spoiler alert, it finds its missing piece. The piece fits perfectly, so the circle starts rolling perfectly. At first the piece is overjoyed, but then it gains speed and rolls past all its friends. At the end of the story, it leaves its missing piece behind because it realizes it was happy or flawed was happier with its friends. Why did I just summarize a book that possibly has less words than the summary I just did? Because Amy and I are not a perfect match and neither science nor dating apps would have likely paired us together. We argue, don't always understand each other, and are generally very different. But friction causes growth in plants, muscle fibers, and relationships. One of the things our world seems to be trying to avoid through science or other means is the allowance for tension, friction, and the growth that comes from it. Of course I don't want to go back to the era of my childhood. The accomplishments we have made in human rights, medicine, and the availability of information is incredible, and I am proud at this point in history. However, the explosion in efficiency and communication, not to mention the reliance on algorithms to run our life, means that we are less likely to make the mistakes that give us character and shows us love. There's a great scene in Netflix series House of Cards where a math genius 
compiled all of the metadata that was giving candidates a massive advantage. Algorithms would show politicians exactly who and where to campaign and what to say and what to dress and how many times to blink. These things do work, by the way, and are used all the time. But the scene that stuck with me was when he was at a jazz club talking to someone and said, but big data can never predict the first time someone heard jazz. This is what I feel is missing in our quest for the algorithm of love. Part of love is jazz. Part of love is a mistake. And out of that mistake comes passion and growth. People can find jazz in other people and dating sites and they do all the time. I'm sure they are incredibly helpful for people to meet, especially in a world that seems to create smaller and smaller social groups. But if you are on a quest for love, friendship, or just a momentary escape from feeling lonely, I think that's a good, it's good to look up from your phone sometimes. Trust me. One time I literally stepped on someone taking a nap. It was legitimately insane for both of us. Flaws are good. Ted Turner, Henry Ford, Steve Jobs, Tommy Hilfiger, Richard Branson, the founder of HP, Ikea, Charles Schwab, and many other titans of industry are all dyslexic. Bill Gates, the founder of BitTorrent, as well as the phys uh, physicists and comedians I know have Asperger's Syndrome. I, uh, I have a few friends that are leading male romantic leads in movies that millions of adoring female fans would be heartbroken to learn they are intensely gay in real life. Dyslexia on paper would never be associated with the most successful people on earth. Um, all right, well, it just keeps going. I just wanted to uh, read you guys the beginning. <clears throat> the weapons of mass distraction. And then there's uh, every chapter is uh, a new date. Because that, that date one is simply just meeting on the street, then date two, then date three. I want to audiobook this and I'll buy it. Take what you want for it and double it. Oh, that's hilarious. Thank you. It's going to be legit. They published it. I don't need a publisher. I don't want a publisher. I'm done with that shit. You know? I want to read you guys more of this book. Cause it gets crazy. It's not all just like, like that's a little more, um, it gets a lot more about me and Amy's actual experiences together. You know, the book's been done for a while guys. It's all political. Why I, it's not being published, but I see it as an opportunity, but it's uh, financially fairly shitty. Oh, by the way, if you guys want to buy one of these, these are 20 bucks. Uh, the great Artling designed it. Flasks. These will save you money. The reason, one of the reasons I, I like to sell flasks is um, if you bring your own booze places and you don't have to buy it, it'll save you money immediately. So 20 bucks, huge pianist.com slash flask. Uh, there's not a lot of them. So I only do one run of each. I make it 150 of these and that's all I'll ever make of those. So if you want to buy those, Go for it. And um, hugepianist.com also for Portland, uh, Bellevue, and um, Richland uh, tickets. And uh, hugepianist.com slash subscribe or patreon.com slash WDTL if you want to support the show. All right, let me read some of these uh, super chats. Oh, shit. I messed up. Give me a second. I'm in a better mood after reading that. Just, I know I was being a dick earlier, but it's been a rough, rough couple days, guys. Because even my own dad was like, "Couldn't you have just played the game and just uh, had the release the book, and then you could have written what really is you?" And I'm like, "Dad, once, like, once you get down on your knee, you never get up." Like, you can't do that. That that people think that you can pretend to be you like you can pretend to be someone else to get some financial thing and then uh just go back to yourself and that's not the way the world works i would get famous for being someone i'm not if i like changed too much of the book or if i like like they asked me i couldn't make fun of lena dunham um then what once once you concede you just keep conceding and i've seen it so many fucking times that I even told my dad, I'm like, dad, the reason your office mates would kill, he used the word kill, to have a, a contract with Norton, and I, a SUNY, a state history ma uh, major graduate, 
comedian with no history of writing books got a $60,000 advance to do a, a, a book with them is because I'm not a fucking coward and, and people just know that I won't bend and that's what makes me valuable and what I have to say valuable. But that's a double-edged sword and, it's, and that will also make it so I lose that fucking contract and now I have to give back $20,000. It's the same thing though, and I have peace in it. Because I know what I say is 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 valid and people want to hear it because it's not placating. It's not trying to get anything from it. And and God bless my family for sticking with me. Because I know it's not always easy as as a woman who women naturally are gravitated towards safety. But Amy is such a fucking rock star that she's gravitated towards truth and honesty and, and alpha males. And she knows that what I'm doing is is strong and she loves me for it. And God bless her for that because it, it would be so easy if I had a weaker woman. They uh, I, Women leave men over things like this. All right, this is from Ben. Oh, and first of all, I just want to say that I consider you a role model right up there with JBP. That being said, I have a serious dilemma that I was hoping you could provide some guidance on. I know you hate pedophiles as much as I do, so I can't think of a better person to talk to. I don't know if I'm supposed to read this out loud. Uh, two days ago, my, all right. Yeah, this sounds, uh, let me see if, it, if you say I should read this out loud. Obligation, all right. Oh, it's, it's cool, all right. Two days ago, my girlfriend told me she was uh, sexually molested by her uncle for four years when she was a child, ages four to eight. I'll be attending a surprise birthday party for her mother in two weeks. It was informed that the uncle will probably be there. I don't know how I can look at that creature and not murder him with my bare hands. I know if I attack that piece of human garbage, it will be devastating to my girlfriend and her family, not to mention I will probably end up in jail, but I don't think I will be able to physically restrain myself from ripping his throat out. In my opinion, that animal isn't deserving of a shallow grave. I don't want to put you in an awkward spot of dancing around the subject of publicly condoning violence, so I understand if you don't want to talk about this on one of your live streams. But if you have anything to say on the matter, maybe you could shoot me an email. No obligations, obviously. I know you're a busy man with a beautiful family and career. Hopefully this message uh, doesn't get lost in the shuffle. But either way, thank you for everything you do, brother. Uh, I hope one day to make it to one of your shows and meet you in person. God bless your family. All right. what I, I'll just tell you straight up what I think. Um... She can't j go to the party and she can't be around him um, and act like it's okay. She, and if her mother thinks that's okay, she shouldn't be... If her mother knows this story and thinks it's okay for her to just be at a party, she, she shouldn't have her mother in her life. That sounds so uh, intense, but you have to understand that's the rape of a child. Anyone who condones that is, is bad. And it's not your job to murder this man. Um, maybe you can talk to authorities. I don't know what the, um, the, the statute of limitations is on, on uh, sexual assault of a minor. Hopefully it's long. Uh, I would suggest having your girlfriend file uh, uh, charges just so that it's in the system. It's known that this is who he is. Murdering him won't do anything. Uh, although it's obviously a thought, but you can't condone this. You can't go to a party with her and stand there. Well, this guy is there. You uh, can't condone any of it. You have to draw a line in the sand and any family member in her life that wants you to is not, doesn't love her. And the more, and, and it's toxic and it's only going to bring her down. You're in a tough spot, dude. I've been in the same exact spot as you, and it's fucking brutal because, like, there's going to be part of you that says just, just get along with everyone, but that's wrong. Don't physically assault him because you're right. You'll end up in jail, and it will only make him into a victim when it's your girlfriend is the victim. Um, it's going to be very, very, very hard for the family to mm -hmm. confront the reality of the situation, but you can't be a part of that. It'll fuck up your soul. It will. Tell your girlfriend that she's not going to the party if he's there. Straight up. And if she does, tell her it will affect your relationship and you don't know if... 
Because listen, if you ever have children with this woman, you have to understand that she thinks it's okay to be around a child rapist. That's going to be the mother of your kids. So this is a very serious situation, bud, and I really hope that uh, you do the right thing because there is a right and a wrong in this situation. And it's not, don't attack him, don't murder him, uh, but you have to absolutely have a lie in the sand and make sure other people know exactly who this man is. All right, it's from Mark. Hey, bud, I've been a huge, I'm a huge fan. I graduated from a liberal arts college in 2015 and can uh, absolutely confirm the toxic postmodern cultural culture present at these institutions. I taught seventh grade English. All right. I felt pretty frustrated with the general political dialogue until I found you, Peterson, uh, Molyneux, Brett, Eric Weinstein, Yaron Brook, and amongst others. Keep doing what you're doing. We need it. All the best, Maine Bear. Thank you, brother. It means a lot. And I'm doing Molyneux at one, my time. So I have to, I only have 50 minutes left on this because then I chat with uh, my man, Steph. I love that dude. And he'd tell you the same thing. I'm not going to speak for him, but he, he, it's, uh, uh, do not condone that behavior in any way. And anybody in her family that knows that's what's happened and allows that man to be around does not love her. Oh, this is just a nice super chat tip from Larry. You, uh, complete me kick ass Papa bear. That's awesome. That's why I know we'll, we'll, we'll get through this shit. Charles. Let's see what Charles got to say, yo. Big Bear, this is the second time I've tried to... Oh, Palmetto Bear. I read that. I'm glad I read that. I, I, I go back to the ones I missed earlier because um, it's not fair of me to only read the ones during the, the live stream, even though sometimes I can't get to all of them. Oh, and good morning. I agree with you about 12. 12 tribes of Israel. 12 is the highest number in craps. 12 inches in a foot. The day is divided into two 12-hour halves. Also, you mentioned that I'm Not Norm channel on YouTube for Norm McDonald clips. There's also an I'm Not Don for Don Rickles. That's awesome. I'm not the creator affiliated. I just figured that you and your audience might like the I'm Not Don channel. Hell yeah. Anyways, got some questions. I gave up on Star Wars. Disney has destroyed it. A lot of fans are angry because of the SJW stuff plus uh, bad movie making. There's even a boycott solo campaign. What do you think about boycott solo campaign? Also, would you call yourself a Christian or a deist? Yeah, I call myself a Christian. Any chance you performed to in Branson? It's pretty redneck out here. There's the Yakov Smirnoff Theater. Last, could you play Pa de De from the Nutcracker? Thanks, Bob. Uh, I'm, I'm looking into the Yakov Smirnoff Theater for sure. And I don't know that one offhand, but I'll look into it. And uh, yeah, I call myself a Christian. And I agree with you that SJW have ruined Star Wars. It's, it, Star Wars was the ultimate hero's journey. And now it's another victim narrative. Heather, uh, thanks from your friend, Esoteric Bear. Never heard of you. Um, never heard you call my verification out in your live stream. Welcome, Esoteric Bear. This is from Michael. Big Bear, like you, I spiral. Do I probably go darker, longer, and deeper? Don't do an image search on that. <laughs> darker, longer, or deeper. That's funny, dude. Just go straight to video. I think this might be funnier if you knew I am a light-skinned, freckled Irish guy, or as I like to say, a spotted albino. If you look at the history of the Irish, it makes a lot of sense because, as we all know, white people can't be slaves. Hilarious. In honor of my newfound cultural appropriation of shedding my slave name, and I would like to be verified as Grateful Bear. Welcome, Grateful Bear. I suck at being grateful, and it is something I really need to improve on. I've, um, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you're a grateful guy. I found that the best way for me to handle my spiraling is to just do something nice for someone else. If you could treat Mama Bear and Walter to dessert or something like that, it would help my state of mind. Of course I will. I always treat my Mama Bear fucking great. Then I might be able to let some hostages go. Baby steps. That's funny. P.S. The Bears should check out vetsforchildrescue.org. There are now volunteer opportunities and the stuff they are doing is really cool. I love you, buddy. Welcome, Grateful Bear. You sound like an awesome guy. Hey, Turkey Bear here. I was thinking you could expand your Spanish language joke. The word for deny in Spanish is negar. And you could definitely do a transitional piece between that and a certain bike thief. That's hilarious. Jerry, reboot your modem. Oh, this is from before. Thanks, though. Jay, Big Bear, I emailed you about the totally understandable that you're busy. But as a friendly reminder, I'm an ex-sign maker and graphic designer and have the capac uh, capability of making some rad die-cut vinyl stickers. 
you have a sticker guy, sorry, sticker person in the mix? I'll make whatever stickers you and the Bears want. I can even do personalization. Let's work something out if you're down. I am way down. We'll get um, Artling in on it. We should have Artling uh, design a bunch of stickers or a bunch of his print, um, paintings, and then we make stickers. And, um, yeah, we'll go through. Yeah, I'm down, dude. You know I'm down. I haven't even gotten to the bear phone. I got a very limited amount of time today, but hope things are moving in a good direction. Cast, this is from Herman Yon. Cast the leftists in dim light, those dirty postmodern neo-Marxists. Uh, read aloud if you don't want to do a UNN report about this. <laughs> I'm going to drink some Jack out of my unbearable Stein 1.0 and then commit a tree hugger hate crime. What else am I going to do with my sword? Respond to my text someday. Herman, you have my personal phone number. You know I do respond to your text. I just have a lot going on. Um, to the unbearables listening, have fun out there and remember to act meaningful. That's good advice. The eyes that only see negativity multiply when you stop doing so and then we lose the culture war. Do some fun things. And if they double with a purpose, then he made a symbol thing. It looks like balls. Um, yeah, always do things. Like, doing things good is good. Hey, Owen, Big Texas Bear here. Wrote you last time and you told you would have triplet toddlers. Well, thought of one of your songs during one of their recent meals. While they're eating, my wife sometimes does flashcards to help them learn words. One of the flashcards was Ride, with a picture of a kid on a ride-on toy. Just so happened to be the same ride-on toy we just got them. So I said, um, I laughed and told them the kid had stolen their bike. Here's a photo. I can't get to the photo right now because of this. I haven't really figured that out, but that's hilarious, dude. Having triplets sounds awesome. You just bang a bunch out. Oh, George, you're, you're too nice. That was very generous, buddy. Keep going on. As C.S. Lewis said, I never exactly made a book. It's rather like taking dictation. I was given things to say. I love that. C.S. Lewis is probably my favorite author in history, by the way. Thank you, George. It means a lot. Michelle, I know it's hard to keep up the good fight. I know you will not fail. I'm spreading the word, getting my friends who are like-minded to watch your material and tell their friends as well. All the bears should do the same. You are allowed to be pissed. Screw anyone who does not understand. There are plenty of new people that will appreciate your honesty. Community bear. Love and blessings sent to you and the fam. Thank you. means a lot. Jason, I've thought about the same things you said. One thing that stuck in my head was a question you had how to deal with the bears and culture and stuff. The question, where do we, where to go with all of this? I gnawed on it for a while and something really silly popped into my head. One group, one group to look at, this sounds so stupid. That's what he said. I'm not telling him it's stupid is ICP, Insane Clown Posse. I'm, I'm not a fan of theirs, but they came to my mind. Those guys kind of did what you are doing now. They created the subculture of fearless people who were rejected from the status quo. They have festivals, they built their own vocab style and everything. They created a subculture. Think about it like that. You could do yearly bear fest, get fearless comics to show up, get your culture to show up. Would be a great way to spread the culture, make money and show that this is about happiness, not hate. Just an idea that popped in my head, take care of Breakfast Bear. It's a great idea, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this. A lot of people told me that I should uh, reach out to Milo to have him publish my book in Dangerous Books. And this is the thing. I respect what Milo's doing. I would love to uh, support a fellow outsider. But my book isn't exactly dangerous. Like, that's the irony about the bears. And I know my message, and I know what a lot of people take from it, is it's very, very normal. Like... I get what the insane clown posse does, and I get what you're saying. It's almost like uh, like fish. I've seen fish perform, and they have like this whole subculture going on. But ironically, the bear subculture is literally American normal culture from normal times. Like, try hard, work hard. You know, you're not a victim. Get a good woman. Have a family. You know, like speak truth to power. Be funny. It's okay to laugh. Like. There's a difference between racial and racist. It's okay to be smart. It's okay to think that, that words should mean something and you can't change the meaning based on Huffington Post articles. That social approval is not above truth. Like these things. And these things aren't conducive to like a, like a, a clown posse type subculture. They're, it's literally like... I saw Paul Joseph Watson do a video about how... Um, conservative is the new punk and it's almost like that it's almost like i feel like i am in the punk scene now 
when it's like we're t- I'm trying to find a place I can perform and everyone shut me down and I have to perform in a library and the crowd comes and it's a blast and I look out at the audience and I see young people that want to be family people. You know, I had a heckler in Pittsburgh and he was literally yelling positive things about how he wanted a good woman <laughs> to like have a family with and he has a small business. And so it's a very bizarre situation to be a subculture, but actually be the majority of America. And I don't, it's not really conducive to like a new language or like a a crazy way of dressing or stuff like that. It really is conducive to just, I think that's why a lot of Christians and a lot of Jews have also uh, been drawn to the bears is because it's about basic and ancient like moral ethical codes that scientifically you can kind of prove are right where it's like when you act this way your life will get better and it's not always going to be financial but you'll you'll walk a path that allows you to deal with uh the crazy chaos of reality and right now there's so much chaos that chaos is becoming the normal and especially in the media and there's so many of us that just want to rebel against that and just be normal. It's like the new pornography is like leave it to Beaver, you know, or just a, a stay at home mom and a hardworking dad and just two kids that want to get in trouble with a slingshot. Like that's now seen as taboo. And it's like, that's why it's so interesting and, and how the majority of America would prefer to have a comedian like me, but the way our culture is being devi- uh, defined by, by mass media and the, the social elites in the uh, Silicon Valley is that we're the outsiders. And that's, it's a very bizarre place to be an ar- artist. Like I'm like a subversive artist because I want normal American values. But I like it where your head's at. Oh, Liam, my man, Liam. I was so blown away by how you came up with your Tiki Torch joke that I told the joke to two of my closest friends to see what their reaction would be. Don't worry, I'm not a stand-up comic, so I didn't steal the joke. Oh, buddy, steal the joke. It's a funny-ass joke. I told them that that was an Owen Benjamin joke. I tell them comedian jokes not to steal the jokes, but to see which part of the joke they would laugh at and to see how I could find similar reactions when constructing my own jokes. They thought the same thing as I have in which they thought that was the, one of the most well-constructed jokes they've ever heard. Could you tell us how you came up with the joke step-by-step? Step? Did you start with Charlottesville and later to malaria or the other way around? How did you come up with the joke step-by-step? Step? Oh, it's a great question. I love talking um, comedy theory. The way I came up with the joke step-by-step. Step. So it was that iconic picture, and I'll find it for you right now. This is fun. I think that's a great question. Charlottesville protest okay there's this one picture here it is I already found it and this made me laugh really really hard because I immediately uh, made a meme on Twitter I believe that just said I hate mosquitoes and it was this picture And so the first joke I made was because the Tiki Torch, look at this picture that it's so passionate and it looks almost like it's staged, like that they cast this guy and um, he's just like yelling, but like right in the picture is a Tiki Torch. And normally, because the torch image, let's, um, let's dive even, even more into this. Um... Villagers, torches, Frankenstein. I mean, that, that'll probably come up with something. All right, so this is like a, a very common image in literature. Like, let me show you this. It's archetypal. It's the villagers with pitchforks and torches. This is in just countless things. That's why I I do kind of think that there is a staging element of the media around Charlottesville. So this is like the normal image. 
where you have the, the townspeople with the torches. But for some fucking reason, they use tiki torches. Almost like they couldn't, they didn't have the budget to get real Frankenstein torches for this absurd photo shoot. Because they wanted to conjure this image of the ignorant townspeople coming after the, the scientist or the, the true knowledgeable people or whatever. And so, so my joke, I, I latched onto the joke immediately was I hate mosquitoes because tiki torches are for keeping mosquitoes away because you burn citronella. So then when I'm starting to turn it into stand up, um, just one mechanism of stand up where you can, where I like to do is called dramatic irony, where the audience knows something that the speaker does not know. Like right now, if you guys saw like a killer behind me with a, with a hatchet and he's holding it up, like he's going to hit me. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm, no one knows where I live. I'm never going to die. The audience would start laughing. Because the joke is, I don't know what you know. It's called dramatic irony. It's been used since before Shakespeare, right? So I constructed the joke that I want to help black people. Um, and because black people are, because I was reading about sickle cell anemia and how if you're heterogeneous for sickle cell anemia, you can't get malaria. And that actually became beneficial to a lot of Africans because of how many people die of malaria. So I start, I just, my brain starts putting these things together. And so now the joke is, I really want to help black people. So now you already have an irony. The irony is that these guys want to help black people. And they're screaming about how much they care. And that's the basis of a joke, is uh, irony, where it's uh, juxtaposition, hot, cold, big, small. And it's the opposite of what is reality. So now the way to write a good joke is you say, how do we get to that? How do we make it so that the ultimate irony is that these protesters are there because they care so much about black people? So how do you get there? With the fucking tiki torch. That one thing that makes it odd, that stands out, that everyone knows about is the tiki torch. The tiki torch is a way to keep mosquitoes away. Mosquitoes bring malaria. So now I become one of these guys and I say, you know, I wanted to do my research. And the thing that really makes the joke like timeless is if you follow what I'm saying, it's even more accurate than black lives matter. That's the craziest thing. If you really do care about black people, the number one killer is malaria. You'd be trying all day long to stop malaria. So that's the ultimate irony is that what I'm doing is actually more efficient than black lives matter. So, so I go to the black lives matter parade, and I bring my tiki torch to keep the mosquitoes away from my black friends because I'd be damned if anybody comes near them. And I'm like, get out of here, mosquitoes. And then, of course, I get, I, um, I get stabbed in the dick. But someone else came up with another closer to that joke. I forgot it already, but it was really, it was funny enough for me to write down about like having a, be like, and then what happened? We all had a barbecue because they I thought it was funny. And white people and black people aren't really as d divided as CNN makes it out to be. Like that's a, that's a new angle that I've, I've been working with. Steve, in 2004, I published a children's book through a local publisher in Texas. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I know this industry very well. Oh, thank you. You're gifted, talented, and we have your back. If you need anything help out with this book, please let me know. Yeah, a bunch of the Patreons wrote me the, uh, similar stuff. Like, if you need help, let me know. I think what I need right now is someone to help uh, proofread and just line edit, and then we, we sell it on Amazon and direct from here if we can do um, ebooks and then the audiobook. I don't know how to get on audible.com. That's something I really want to get on. Let me read a couple more of these and then I will uh, I will um, I have to get ready for the Manu chat. That guy's awesome. Erwin Bunjamin. And it seems to, to me you lived your life like a soy boy breaking wind. That's pretty funny. Tough, tough. We love you, Big Bear. Dom Tough, Networking Bear. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and this app is going to change the game in a very positive way because I know the, the chat in Vimeo is very slow and sluggish. I, I, don't, I no longer uh, go on Facebook because I'll post on Facebook, but the videos keep getting flagged and I'll, it'll shut down Facebook. And a lot of you guys have made the valid point where it's like, I love that you don't take a knee, but come on, we need to find you someplace. So I'm trying to appease that in some way. But now I'm on uh, Twitch. 
It's Unbearable Comedy. So follow my Twitch, Unbearable Comedy on Twitch. Amy seems to really like Twitch. And follow my YouTube, Owen Benjamin Comedy on YouTube or Owen Benjamin Clips or the one DeLev runs that I always forget. And on Twitter, at Owen Comedy, DeLev runs that one. But yeah, they, they, they're making me and all of us into outsiders. And um, it's bullshit. And we'll fight it until we win. Oh, and have you considered setting up an Indiegogo page to cover your book's cost and get it published? I don't know what that is, but I will look into it. Thank you. Andrew, song request, Hymn 43 by Jeff Brochall. Bonus if you can substitute Ian Anderson's sick flute playing with your kazoo. That's a good idea. I don't know how to do it right now, but um, here's my kazoo. I'll play something with a kazoo. <laughs> About, um, from the, the the bear that was talking about uh, SJW Star Wars. Uh, Jason, hey Big Bear, love uh, love what you've read to us in your book. I got to pick. Up the cup from preschool. I'll catch the rest later. Thanks, buddy. Jesse. Hey, Owen. Chad's working great on my end. The book is funny so far, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Inspector Bear. Oh, it gets wild. Second or third date. Um, let's just say there's a police helicopter over me, and I have my hands behind my head. But it's still a funny uh, story that I think a lot more people will relate to than, than people want to admit. <sighs> Travis, why aren't koalas considered bears? They don't meet the koalifications. Oh, snap. What a great joke. Wow, we really turned my mood around today. Thank you, bears. I was so fucking angry earlier. Because as much as I know truth and freedom is more important than money, $20,000 is a fucking devastating amount of money. But here's the thing is I'm, I'm seeing it as a positive that I got to work with uh, one of the best editors in the world for free because now I'll just release it myself and uh, I, got, I got to work with one of the best editors in the world and it's a win-win. It's just short term, you have that human instinct where you just go, fuck! But long term, you know it's the right move. That's why... It's important to find your ethics and your ideals and what you think and stick to them because short term it'll hurt. But if I just cave for prestige or money, uh, long term, I'd be a different person and I wouldn't trust myself and I'd probably end up very uh, depressed. All right, Mike Freeze. Jordan, Peter, uh, Jor uh, Jordan Peterson's rule number one is always tell the truth. With comedy, you can tell the truth by opening, by pointing out non-truths. Our human souls know deep down that the leftist utopia doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. And if you want to talk about um, Bernie Sanders wants to give everybody a job. Watch the new Stefan Molyneux uh, video about that. It's, it's as economically backward and nonsensical as as you can possibly be. It is not how economics works at all. So you, like at this point, if you're a Bernie bro, you have to be lying to yourself. I liked Bernie Sanders for like a month because I thought he was going to uh, reform a lot of the, the banking practices that is leading to just all this money printing. And then I realized that he was attacking the banks, not for that reason, but because he's a goddamn socialist. All right, 72 virgins is an awful lie. Yeah, for sure. Atheism is a cop-out. Agreed. There's no wage gap. Women are not equal to men. Guns don't... Oh, this is great. You're just laying it down. Guns don't kill people. You cannot choose your gender. And pedos are not people too. They're monsters. But that's so good. You just, that's how I think. It's literally like, these are truths. But maybe monsters have a truth, a purpose to keep evil close. Otherwise, why... On earth have these false ideologies um, always existed in some form. It's Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. Aristotle. 
uh, three act structure. Everyone can recognize these truths because storytelling is hardwired into us. So true. There has to be good and evil. So maybe the ones who don't get red pilled in this lifetime are supposed to be conformists to lies. Useful idiots. Because there is both truth and lies and everything. Well, here's the thing is I don't believe in determinism. I think that everybody can choose the path they walk. And I think useful idiots are people that haven't seen. I've been a useful idiot. I probably am right now in certain ways that I don't understand. But the difference is when someone realizes something's wrong, do they continue with the lie because it's easier? And I think true evil is in that. It's in, it's, it's in laziness. It's not in this dramatic fashion, you know? Like, I think that's why people are obsessed with Hitler is because he's one of the few truly evil people that's um, dramatic and passionate. Most evil are bean pushers. They're, they're, they're people that just won't speak the truth and they would rather have um, luxury than any uncomfort or discomfort whatsoever. And then those people end up just being vile and vicious and, and violent because they now have to protect their lie in order to keep getting their fucking, their drip, drip, drip of their morphine lie. Um... Truth is absolute, but desire for truth is between an individual and God, not a collective. I 100% agree. You either seek truth for yourself or you don't. Those who find comfort in lies are crabs in a bucket. If we can escape the bucket, it's worth it. I think about this all the time. Half the shit I, I preach about isn't for people that already do like think this way. It's for people that, that are crabs in a bucket. I think a lot of leftists need to be saved from themselves. Because I don't think they realize year after year they just get colder and colder until they, they don't even have the effort or the ability of climbing out of the bucket. Um, legends like Malanu, Saul, Dan Carlin. I, I, dude, you're listing all my guys. Brett Weinstein and Jordan Peterson represent truth and we are so lucky to be living in this time. I think it's important to be thankful in these times and we're able to recognize and seek the truth. Thank you bears for helping light the way. I, Mike, that was awesome. And uh, I agree with everyone you just listed, too. Dan Carlin has been as instrumental in my life as anybody. Uh, Hardcore History was one of the first honest takes on history. And as a history-obsessed man, um, I, it was just, it's like music to my ear. It, it, it's better to me than music, listening to Car, uh, Dan Carlin or Thomas Sowell or uh, Stefan Molyneux or uh, just, it, it literally is better on my ears than music. Because it is ordered and it makes sense. It's like the chaos of even Radio Lab, which I once loved. You know, some of these more left-leaning podcasts that I used to love. The amount that they contradict themselves and the amount that they'll change their underlying premises. It, it's, it, ca- it's like, th- it sounds like this to me. It literally, like this is... Like that's order, you know, and, 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 and here's the thing. You have to have a, a few flaws to be truly artistic, I think, because just order is, it's just a scale. Want to know what else is just a scale? Canon in D. This is just a scale. It's just complicated enough to keep your brain wanting more. It's the perfect blend of uh, mystery and order. Because it's just, it's, it's, it's a scale. It's, literally, I'm just going. But that's so predictable that it doesn't pleasure you as much as this. And then it goes. Because once you get the, the, this is just a scale, but the left hand elaborates on it enough so that the order isn't tedious. And then once you get the left hand, this is order now. Now you can go uh, something new with this hand because you have this bass. But the left isn't changing. It's a good metaphor of, uh, what should be the left and the right wing, but the left wing has been perverted horribly. 
But the left hand is the is the um, conservative, and the right hand is the free thinker. And by the way, that's still conservative. Like conservatism assumes free thought. That's the weird thing. That's why it's not when you someone says they're conservative, it doesn't mean they're closed-minded. It means they have the root. That's never changing. And because of that root, you can have melody, right? So that's not changing. And then in that, you can speak on it. And I can change this. I'm making this up right now. But I'm still following the rules established by the, this hand. If not, this is this is progressivism. Ready? You see how it's just garbage, and that was still ordered because I was still doing the rhythm. Class matter. Wage gap, wage gap. It's fucking nonsense. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Sorry to hear about your crappy situation and hope it changes for the better. Best greetings from the Netherlands. Oh, I'm all good, bud. It's just, I get pissed and then we, we solve it. Crippled Bear here. Thank you for reading the chapter. During the time my girlfriend and I have uh, been dating, her father has stated he's trans and has destroyed her family. Uh, your love for Amy encourages me that my family style of love isn't crazy. Loved your show in Pittsburgh. No, it's not crazy, bud. People are getting engulfed by chaos. As much as I just criticize my father, I love my father. My father was always a great force in my life. But, uh, you know, it, there's just still times when even with your own father, you can be like, do you not see, you know, because the father will, makes a man. It starts with a boy. But the lessons my dad gave me allowed me to see some of these things that now I almost have to te reteach him, which is very interesting that, um, that prestige is is not valuable. And I think sometimes when you're in a college campus environment for too long, um, you just stop seeing that. And I think like being a comedian is almost like the free market version of being a professor where people have to choose to buy tickets and choose to, you know, get flask for 20 bucks at hugepianist.com slash flask. Um, Cause it's on choice. And as much as, uh, my dad has affected a lot of people's lives for the for the better. He's really done some good things in his life and his career. Uh, there's an element of no choice in college where it's a prerequisite or something where you have to take a class. And I think that that will make people start not seeing 
the the intense importance of, uh, of of ethics and sticking to what you believe in, because um, prestige is almost like a, a new currency that exists in a uh, in an arena without choice. And I unfortunately, I think college campuses have become an arena of no choice. And my mother sees it. My mother was red pilled when she was like seventy. It's hysterical. My mom now just listens to my podcast and Peterson and um, she can't stand a lot of this bullshit on the left. And she used to be wicked on the left. And uh, but she never lost that part of her. I think being a stay at home mom for 15 years allowed her to avoid that indoctrination, which is really interesting to witness. But thank you, Cripple Bear. That was very generous of you, my friend. Randy did a search and found some links that may help your Mac go faster. I think we solved it, but I don't know. I'm always skeptical. I fucking hate technology. If I don't know if you guys have noticed. Lynn. Hi, Owen. I wish this could be more. Oh, dude, it's that's very generous. You got to feed the bear, baby. You did it. That's awesome. I'm listening to the live stream now about the pedo. Thank you for staying up for us. Keep fighting and we will support you. Keep love you and your family. 45 Cali Bear. Don't read this out loud. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah. I'll always stand up for you guys. That was heart wrenching. Sorry, you had to. All right, skate of gear. That was that's the super chat of the year right there. That was very nice. There is a hungry market for your book. You could lie and play the game, becoming financially wealthy and morally bankrupt. The way you and your team adapt is because a cave woman nagged. That gives me hope every day. The genetic line didn't die. Humanity may make it. You show up at 11 a.m. no matter what. Adapting to social media and platform bans to, bans to reach an audience. Uh, people able to adapt will be there and they will bring more. Respect from Alaska. Very happy. Can you write um, everything now for me? Like what you just wrote is the nicest and most honest like rendition of what I am going through. And that was really touching. Skate of uh, Barry Happy. I'm glad you appreciate what we're all doing. That was awesome. I needed that. And, um, yeah, if you, if you lose your soul, they're, 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 that's in the Bible, you know, it's like when, when the devil brings Jesus to the desert, it's like, you can lose your soul for what it's like, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Norton asked me to lose my soul. I'm not, I'm not putting it in that binary way. I'm just saying that publications are hard left leaning. So I was already a dice roll and the dude who backed me left. And I then was told things that I would have to do and switch my opinions. And, and then they just stopped responding and then they, you know, but I have the book back. It's, it's like, it's going to be okay. And I'm glad I got to read you part of the first chapter. Cause I hope you see how good it is. And that's just date one. It goes up to like date it gets in the thousands like dates become living together and just days we have and deal and dealing with um, issues with being parents and the goods and the bads and the fun and the sorrow and the it's just it's called the good fight. It's just like I really think that all everything's aligning well. It's just the short term is a bitch. Um, Lynn. Thank you for breaking down the Tiki Torch malaria joke. It made me laugh and learn. Lighten my mood too. Sorry about the last post. Oh, last post was incredible. And I think a lot more people. And what you talked about that I didn't read out loud, part of, there's, there's parts of the book that deal with that, that I'm discussing. There's some darkness in the book, ladies and gentlemen. It's not all just me pontificating on uh, technology. There's some real darkness that have been overcome in, in, overcame in our lives. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Timothy, do you have a favorite comedy film that is dark and bleak? Do you have a favorite comedy film that is light and happy? Uh, yeah, my favorite light and happy is The Princess Bride. I'm going to read some of the bare phones. By the way, um, subs hugepianist.com slash subscribe if you want to support the show and get access to the bare phone for 20 bucks. And by the way, don't like do a monthly thing that's real high if you're not going to stick with it. Because then we start planning out budgets and shit for like the, the new... Whether it's the new app or the new website or um, buying gear, just keep it low if if it's at all an issue. Because sometimes uh, my little heart gets all excited and then it just gets canceled like three days later. But uh, just go small. Just make it so it doesn't hurt at all. 
And that's how we can plan ahead and like get new shit. Okay, bear phone. Let's check out some stuff. This was sent at 12.22. And then I will get to uh, responding to a lot of the bear phone. It's just gotten pretty big. I hope this reaches you during the live stream as I would like to be officially verified as bear butt spanking. I, 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 uh, I got you yesterday, bear butt spanking. Without even uh, reading, you're uh, Air Force Colorado, right? I'm currently living in Colorado, finishing out my Bear Force enlistment. Yes, I'm married and preparing for kids. I'm also cooking up an excellent UNN vid, so that should be good. Keep up the good fight. We've got your back from the battlegrounds of Colorado. Welcome, Bear Butt Spanking. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, you see why the book, I thought it was like, um, it was like made to be. It's called, like people keep telling me, keep up the good fight. And the name of the book was The Good Fight. And I'm like, this is the book. Uh, have you checked out my suggestion on the Yemen topic? Oh, yeah. People last night, I did a Periscope. By the way, Owen Benjamin on Periscope. Unbearable Comedy on Twitch. Um, un, uh, hugepianist.fun is also streaming. I'm not sure if that's working. But my web guy, Genghis Bear, is amazing. Such a legend. But uh, last night at the Periscope, me and Amy were answering questions by the, a nice crackling fire. And people were talking about Yemen. Yemen's fucked up. America is now fighting alongside of uh, Al-Qaeda, apparently. It's not my area of expertise. My area of expertise is uh, humans, specifically men and women, and music. But I always like to bring things to light that aren't being covered in mainstream media as much as I can. For example, the South African genocide of white farmers, the Armenian genocide, and Yemen. There's a cholera epidemic in uh, Yemen right now. I think this is what Cowboy Bear wanted me to talk about. Um, and it's just, it's, it's definitely not good what's happening there. And I haven't had time to do enough research to really talk on the subject, but, uh, I do think that it's horrifying. Oh, and Richie Bear here. Sorry about the new laptop comment. Dude, it's fine. That's how I am. That it'll be in the book. Like I can just be fiery. It's how I was raised. My family speaks passionately. Like, I talked about in the, in the Periscope last night where sometimes I'll be like excited like this. It's like, yeah, I just fucking bought a new computer. That's all that is, is passion. It's just exclamation points. It's not anger. Anger is very different. It's anger at the situation. It was never anger at you guys. Um, I've got laptop on the brain. I'm sorry it hit a nerve. Sometimes it's hard to get everything in context. I'm on dialysis disabled, so I'm fully aware of what it's like to be financially fucked. I don't see 20K a year in my bank account, so I can't imagine what you're going through. Didn't know you just bought a laptop. Oh, dude, please don't take what I said like to heart. I'm not upset at you at all. I was upset at the world. Like, you're probably right. I probably knew need a fucking new app, uh, laptop. You know, my iPhone has like this fucking thing in it. Like, look at this. This is the new thing, so I can't, none of my headphones work anymore. So now I have to have an adapter, which is the thing most losable in the world. So I, I can never listen to anything ever, ever again. And they, everyone said I had to, uh, um, I had to get a new iPhone because the other one wasn't working anymore. And it was like a thousand bucks. So I'm not frustrated at you guys or your comment that sound. I, I'm really sorry if that's how you took it. It's, uh, it's this, this obsession with, um, stuff. I, I, I just can't. I have a hard time dealing with it. My desire to laptop is now significantly motivated by the purpose of wanting to write a book about ideas surrounding bear philosophy, working title, get off the hedonic treadmill. Buddy, as soon as I'm doing better with money, I will buy you a laptop. I promise. Like I'll buy you one right now. Fuck it. You're a bear with a bear phone. I trust bear phone people. That might not be financially wise of me right now, but it's if you're going to write a book about bear philosophy, the least I could do is get you a fucking laptop. Can you send me the information for the sticker guy? Bears rule. Um, sticker guy. Can you post somewhere? I don't know how to do this. I'm surrounded by stuff. Uh, sticker guy. Post on this uh, video. Vimeo.com slash Owen Benjamin. Sticker guy. Post underneath this video and people will uh, be able to respond to you. 
That's a good way to find each other. It's like after a video like this, if any of you guys want to find one of the people mentioned or talked about, just uh, post on the video because a lot of people watch the video later. We'll have four or 5,000 live viewers and then that amount after. And then it's five times that amount on, um, on just audio. And then hopefully um, uh, Twitch picks up and all that stuff. We just started that yesterday. Unbearable comedy on Twitch. I have no idea what Twitch is about, but Amy seemed excited about it. What would your thoughts be on an unbearable themed cafe coffee shop with a speaking space for comics, speeches, events, sell some mer uh, memorabilia maybe? What would you think? I think that's a fucking great idea. If I had more money, there's no question I would get into the uh, into the brick and mortar business of uh, live of of um, venues because there's such a lack of venues. Like the venues, the amount of venues that do risk versus reward and will cancel people based on any backlash whatsoever is so high that there must be just a massive amount of uh, business opportunity for that, even if it's small. Oh, oh, I forgot to answer Westside Bear. Okay, the darkest comedy that I like. Well, the lightest comedy is A Princess Bride, Spaceballs. When I was a kid, I loved Beetlejuice, any Adam Sandler movie. Uh, that's all the light comedy. Like the the dark comedy that I find funny. Uh, honestly. Stefan Molyneux's um, YouTube explanations of the truth about Gandhi or something like that are some of the funniest shit in the world just because it's so dry and dark. Like, you know, that shit to me is, is dark as hell, but really, really funny. But as a movie, a dark comedy. I can't really think of any right now because I don't really know what dark is. Uh, a dark comedy. Does anyone have any examples? Let me go on the normal chat and see if you guys are talking about what dark comedy. Um, the web page reloaded because there was a problem. Okay, Safari has just gone to shit. So let's just get out of here. Let's stay on this Chrome. This Chrome horse shit. All right, let's go to hugepianist.com. I have to go in 10 minutes, but that's plenty of time. I'm really enjoying this. Um, and thank God for Amy for fixing all this shit. All right. This has zero chat members. Is this real? Okay. Well, this isn't, this now froze. Yeah, well that froze. All right. So I don't know. I'm about to fucking break my laptop again. I'll just stick with the PayPal's. All right. Frederick. Freddie, oh, we're, we're getting the app. We have to figure out a way to reach everybody so we all know how to get the app because the app will cure so many of these problems of like the fucking chat freezing and stuff like that. All right. Because I'll pay whatever it takes for the bandwidth to handle the bears because I want expansion. I want more people to be able to chat with each other because when the chat's going good, it's a blast. Um... It's people meet and they become buds and they commiserate about life. And it's just, it's really cool. Let me try it one more time. All right, let's see this chat. Okay, maybe the video even just broke down. I'm guessing that's what happened. Have I been talking to myself for fucking an hour? You gotta be kidding me. Have I seriously just been talking to myself? Has it just been me talking to nothing? All right, let me just read these last couple things and then I'm out of here. <sighs> Hi, Owen. I have a laptop in great condition lying around. I just need an address to send it to. Let me know. That is amazing. You can wait for it to become... What? Okay, give me a second. I'm going to email this bear right now. This bear is going to email you. Uh, let me find it. One second. I'm going to write your email right now so I don't forget to this bear. And he's going to email you 
and you should give them your laptop if you really don't want it because that would be epic one second C H T E S W I. One second. This is this is amazing. If this really works out, and this fucking legend gets a laptop, let me double check. You're amazing. Cosmo Bear. That's Cosmo Bear. Cosmo Bear has a laptop. Dude, it, it's, it's corrected me twice. It just turned Cosmo Bear to Miami Heat twice. Cosmo Bear has laptop. All right, sweet. That's legendary. Frederick. Freddie Bear, UNN Lunar Correspondent. I came up with my entire premise before I knew what you planned to do with UNN, so it seems like my original idea might not mesh with what you are doing with UNN. However, if you, if anyone can figure out a way to pull it off, you make it hilarious. It's you, so I'm going to go ahead and submit the video to UNN when it's finished. Dude, I'm telling you. Like, we can change with what you guys submit. My premise is that there is an uh, absurdly successful libertarian colony on the moon, and I don't realize that UNN is fake news. I think I'm letting Earth know how great free market economics is working out in the lunar... Why don't we just play it like it's real? I don't... I think that, like, we just... You do your news from the moon, and it's just real in this universe. And I'm confused why people still think there's no one living on the moon. I don't have a specific plan beyond that, but perhaps I become convinced that there is an SJW conspiracy to silence the loonies. Listen, this is what I think you do. You, uh... And was, I want to be looking at the camera, not looking off reading. Since my big dumb face is the only thing on the screen, it would be really obvious I was doing it. I love your passion, even when you're having uh, issues. <laughs> um, keep the flame alive, Big Bear. All right, this is what I'm thinking for a lunar. Like, it's just straight up real. Like, the lunar colony is doing really well with free market. And uh, UNN keeps trying to, like be shitty about it because, uh, you know, UNN is kind of mocking CNN a little bit. And, uh, what we could do is, is say like, you know, reporting from the, the free market and the moon, the lunar colony, they're having all the success, but, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders is quoting is saying, and then we'll just do something else. Like we'll, we'll make it so that the joke continuously is that you're not allowed to thrive. And I think that'd be hilarious. All right. I'm going to wrap it up so that I do the Malinu interview and then uh, I enjoy this beautiful day, everybody. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for brightening my mood. And yeah, subscribe, share it, all that good stuff. Uh, Owen Benjamin Clips on, on YouTube, at Owen Comedy Twitter. Unbearable Comedy at Twitch, even though I do not understand it at all. Amy seems to. Owen Benjamin on Periscope, hugepianist.com. For slash flask for your beautiful I'm not racist you're just an idiot I have two more types of flasks coming this week and they're all limited it's only 150 will ever be made uh, patreon slash WDTL until they kick me off or huge pianist.com slash subscribe if you want to support the show and uh, yeah why didn't they laugh at gmail.com or unbearablenewsnetwork at gmail.com if you want to submit uh, videos for the news network that we are still accumulating. And thanks, thanks, thanks for everyone who, um, you know, fed the bear today with the super chats and said some really beautiful, awesome stuff that helped make this uh, an enriching episode of good, of good. And welcome all the new unbearables who have been verified and just keep swinging, keep swinging at these fuckers. Much, much, much love, and it means a lot to me that you guys show up here every day, 11 Eastern Standard Time, and I will be here even if I'm in a shit mood, and the first 10 minutes is me just scowling at a computer screen, getting pissed, and calling everyone names, while my beautiful wife is in a nice hat, because her and Amy, or her and Walter are outside having a hat day. Um, all right, much love, everybody. Peace.